I know there's some parents, grandparents, and uh, family that's come to see some of our young people that uh, had trusted the Lord as their Savior and want to publicly uh, let it be known by being baptized. And uh, we baptized somebody last week. We got some this week. We got some waiting coming up uh, in the next few weeks. And uh, we just thank God for those that are uh, saying that they want to make a pub, make it public. They're not ashamed of their faith in Christ. Amen. And uh, the and the Bible said that we are buried with Him, and uh, baptism is a picture. It said being buried with Him and, and and baptism, even though baptism don't save you, it's a picture of being buried with Him. And as Christ rose from the dead, it's a picture of you being alive in Christ. And uh, you know what? Water don't wash away sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And uh, if water would do it. Uh, we'd just go out in the community and, and make folks get baptized. and uh, But water won't do it. Uh, all that'll do is make you go down a dry center and come up a wet center. And uh, that's that's all, it, all it'll do. But if you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you say, well, if it doesn't wash away sins, why would I be baptized? A couple of reasons. One, Christ commanded it. Amen? That's number one. That should be enough reason. And... Uh, Number two, he set our example. And uh, he didn't have to do that, but he, he actually set our example. The Bible said, even here in two are you called, Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. And uh, that's First Peter 2, 21. We're following him. And he did, and he said, follow my steps. And uh, it's also a public uh, declaration of the world that your faith is in Christ. You know, there's people in the world today that if they went out in their country and they made a public showing of their faith in Christ, they'd be dead by nightfall. But there's people today around this world that'll say, my faith is in Christ, my eternity is sealed, and I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to live or to die for the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, why? Because he died for us. And uh, I'm glad to know that one day because of his death, I'll see him again. Amen? I'm alive and well.
It yet we was going to do it last uh, Wednesday night, and then we thought about it this morning. Uh, you elected the church this year, as far as your active deacons, to add to uh, the 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 ones that received the top uh, votes for this year. That was added uh, is uh, Danny Pound, Billy Joe Raglan, Scott Barnes, and Mac McQuiston, McQuiston, Josh is his name, and. Uh, but uh, that was the, the names that was voted on by you. Um, all in favor of these as a, a vote of the Church of Confidence, say amen. amen. They've already been elected by you, but I presented those names because uh, we've got two of the young men that do not have ordination. And so the last Sunday night of this month, uh, we will have an ordination for, uh, uh, for Mac and for Scott uh, on that last Sunday night of this month. And so I needed to announce that this morning and so that's why I presented it like I did, so we can get it in uh, two weeks ahead of time on the announcements, all right? And uh, so we thank God uh, for that, and uh, that uh, uh, I think uh, just looking forward to the upcoming year, I really am, and that as we go forward, uh, looking forward to what God has in store for uh, this church. This week, I guess all over this country and all over the world, Everybody's got their eyes on France. What's going on over there in Paris? Um, and we, this morning, I'm going to start a, I guess, a two to three part series. I don't know if I'll get it all in next week or not. But I want to bring uh, some messages on the other side of fear. Terrorists, what they love to do is to instill in the minds and hearts of people fear. They want people to fear where they go. They want them to fear what they do. They want them to fear uh, whether or not to speak out for their God. They want them to fear that uh, they want them to change everything in their life that it revolves around them. If they do that, they have succeeded in what they, what they want to do. Because people make bad decisions when they make them out of fear. And I want to give you some things uh, from the Word of God that will help you. But do we all believe that fear is an emotion that can cripple us? It can cripple us. They said over there that people, when, when they started uh, firing in those uh, places, People's like, well, why didn't you run? Why, why did you just get down? Why did you just hunker down where you was knowing what they was doing? And they said it was like they was paralyzed, like they could not move. They was just in fear. They just did not know what to do. As a child of God, I want to give you some things what to do with fear. There's a good side of fear, 
and a bad side of fear. As a parent, you try to instill a good side of fear in your children. You try to tell them that stove will burn them, that car will run over you, that will hurt you. You try to give them good things, uh, using that as a natural response. But I want to give you something from the Word of God this morning. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 25, I guess is a key verse that we're going to begin with this morning. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 25. Say, preacher, are you ever scared on a regular basis? You say, what do you do? You do what you're supposed to do. You keep doing what you're supposed to do. In Proverbs 29, 25, stand with me if you will and honor the reading of the Word of God. The Bible says, The fear of men bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Psalms 34, 11 Look there back with me. Psalms is right before Proverbs. Psalms 34, 11. It says, Come, ye children, and hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. There's good fear, and there's bad fear. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, when Moses came down from the mount, people were scared to even step on the mount. God, they were scared to be around. They even said that. And you told them not to be afraid, God, but to learn, God, to walk in the fear of the Lord. That's a hard thing to understand, God. And so we need you today. I know there's so much scripture in your words you wrote on this subject. And I know, I know that you want us to understand it because it will help us. And I know that you mean for us, God, to, to have peace and safety many times in our life. God, sometimes you allow tribulation and trouble. But God, I pray that we'd learn to put our fear in the right places. And God, step away and be bold in places that we don't need to fear. We ask you to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me see. This is a, this is a big subject. It's a long... It's a, a subject that has been talked about in the Word of God many, many, many times. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. I'll just read them to you and then we'll get started. The Bible said, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. 1 John 4.18 The Bible says in Psalms 118, verse 6, The Lord is on my side, and I will not fear what, man, what can man do to, unto me. Psalms 2.11 says, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Luke 21.26 said, Men's hearts failing them for fear, and looking after those things which are coming on the earth, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. You say it sounds like there's two different directions there. The Bible talks about serve God with, with fear, but then it says, I don't have to fear because God's with me. <laughs> so what's the... Uh, what's the difference? What's the, the things back and forth? We're going to look at good fear this morning, all right? Let me give you some things about good fear. The fear of the Lord, the Bible said, is the beginning of wisdom. We're living in a generation that does not fear God, but they fear man. They lock their doors. They got the security systems. They, they drive around, they have firearms all over the place, they have everything going on. And I'm not saying that those things in themselves are wrong, but there's some people can't sleep at night because they're scared to death of man, what man is going to do unto them. I believe you ought to be prepared for what could happen, but you ought not to live in fear. There's nothing wrong with being prepared for trouble but you ought not to live in fear. And God does not want His people living in fear. You say, well, what kind of fear is a good fear? Well, let me give you some good promises from the Word of God about fear. You say, good promises? Yeah. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27. 
Did you know that good fear, the fear of the Lord, will make you live longer? What? Let me show you in Scripture. Proverbs 10, 27. The Bible says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You say, wait just a minute. The fear of the Lord makes me live longer? Yeah. You say, why? God's in control. God wants us to have a respect for Him and a reverential fear for Him. You say, well, I, I've never heard that. I wrote a definition, tried to write it down. Godly fear is an acknowledgement of an accountability before an all-knowing God by loving what He loves and hating what He hates. By loving what He loves and hating what He hates, we show that we're going to be accountable before a holy God. That's walking in the fear of the Lord. You say, well, I thought it was just being scared. Oh, no, it's not just being scared. It's saying, God, I know I'm going to stand before you one day, so I want to, I want to love what you love, and I want to hate what you hate. You say, well, God wants us just to be God-pleasers. <laughs> That's exactly what He wants. People run around and are people-pleasers all the time. They'll tell folks whatever they want to hear to get favor with man. The Bible says you be careful of people like that, though. They'll say one thing to you and something else to somebody else. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Be careful of a person that flatters with their tongue. But the Bible speaks of that something that will make you, it'll make you better. One king, this is actually a story that was told to be true, the king of Hungary, and that's not where some of y'all are, it's Hungary, all right. You say, I, I know that, I'm the king of Hungary right now. I can smell that food in the back. No, it's king of Hungary. Found himself depressed and unhappy, and he sent for his brother, a good-natured but rather indifferent prince. The king said to him, I'm a great sinner, and I fear to meet God. The prince often, he only laughed at him. This didn't help the king's disposition any. Though he was a believer, the king had gotten a glimpse of his guilt for the way he had lived lately and was seriously, he wanted help. He wanted some help. And in those days it was customary that if the executioner sounded a trumpet before the, a man's door at any hour, it was a signal that he was to be led to his execution. The king sent his executioner in the dead of night to sound a fateful blast at his brother's door. The prince realized with horror what was happening and quickly he trembled and into the king, trembling into the king's presence in agony of terror. He fell to his knees before his brother and begged to know, How have I offended you, brother? What have I done? And the sight of the human executioner was so terrible. <laughs> he said, If the human executioner is so terrible... To you shall I not have a grievous, I have grievously offended God. I fear to be brought before the judgment seat of Christ. Boy, he put it in perspective, didn't he? <laughs> he said, oh my goodness, you've got my life in your hands. And he said, now you understand what's going on inside of me as I have sinned against my God to be brought into his presence. You know, one of these days we're all going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. One of these days we will all stand before Him. And I want you to know, if that don't put the fear of God in you, I don't know what will. One day we'll stand before a God that knows all. That knows what we think. That knows what we've done. That knows what's hidden. Brother Richard Cullum, pastor at Sycamore Baptist Church, told me one time, he said, I think everybody alive has something that nobody knows anything about. But they know. And you know what? We're going to stand before a God that knows it all. You say, preacher, this don't sound like a healthy fear. <laughs> I tell you what, if it gets us right before a holy God, it's real healthy. It makes us live longer. It brings peace and protection. You say, what? 
Look in Psalms 115 verse 11. It said, Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You say, wait just a minute. So if I have the fear of the Lord in my life and I show that I, God, that Lord, I am concerned. Lord, I, I do understand that you are a God that knows everything and that I will be accountable for you, to you. The Bible said it, you're my shield. Absolutely right. If we are fearful before a holy God, we don't have to be fearful before man. God says you will fear one of two. You'll either fear man or you'll fear God. And I want you to know, fear in God, there's promises attached to it. Fear in man brings a snare unto you. It brings destruction. It brings stress upon your life. It brings an early death. It brings things into your life that being fearful of man is negative, but being fearful of God is not negative. You say, wait just a minute. I don't think in this day and time, people don't talk about the fear of the Lord. They talk about health and peace and safety. Listen, folks, there's a God that we will stand before one day. The Bible said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible said when He comes back, will He find faith? And I believe in our generation, there's a generation that fears not God, neither regards man. I believe that we're there. People's got on their shirts. No fear. I want you to know, I fear. I fear before a God that created it all. I fear. You say, why? You don't have anything to be worried about. Not as long as I'm loving what He loves. Not as long as I'm acknowledging and hating what He hates. But when I say my opinions are above His opinion, of His way, He don't have an opinion, above His righteousness. When I think that I love what you hate and I hate what you love, <laughs> then I've put myself against the very God that created it all. We're living in a generation that every man does what's right in his own eyes. Amen. There's absolutes. There's right and wrong. But it brings pre peace and protection. <laughs> Angela actually told me this illustration. I went back and looked it up and was reading on it. And I thought about it. She goes, uh-oh, what did I say? I don't remember what it was. The legend of the Cherokee Indians' youth's rite of passage. She's like, Phew, man, I feel better now. You see somebody sweat when the preacher says something that he's supposed to say what you told them. Amen. His father takes him into the forest and blindfolds him and leaves him alone. He is required to sit on a stump the whole night and not remove the blindfold until the rays of the morning sunshine. He cannot cry out to help to anyone. He, once he survives the night, he is a man. He cannot tell the other boys of his experience because each lad must come into manhood on his own. The boy is naturally terrified. Can you imagine being on a stump blindfold in the middle of the night in the woods? He can hear all kinds of noises. Wild beasts must surely be all around him. Some, hu what, some human might do him harm. The wind blew the grass, the earth, and uh, it says, and shook his stump. <laughs> but he sat, never removing the blindfold. It would be the only way he could become a man. After the horrific night the sun appeared, he removed his blindfold, and it was then he discovered that his father was sitting on the stump next to him. <laughs> he had been in watch the entire night protecting his son from harm. But all night long, he didn't know it was there. See, the fear of the Lord says, God, I don't know what's going on around me, but Lord, I fear you and I trust you and I'm going to run to you for help. And I know that you will protect me no matter what comes my way. I, talked, I was uh, witnessing to a guy that got in my face one time and got real angry with me. I actually talked to a guy, and he was, he was about 6'5". I'm six foot, or was, when I don't slump. He's 6'5", and I, I, he was just, just big. You, you, I mean, just muscular. He's a big old guy. I was talking to him in front of the grocery store parking lot one day, and I talked to him about the Lord, and I asked him, I said, do you know, if I was talking to him about the Lord, and I said, do you... Uh, if you was to die right now, do you know where you'd go? And he said, I don't. 
And I shared with him the, the gospel, and he looked down at me, and he said, I believe. I looked up at him, and I said, you believe what? He said, I said, I believe. <laughs> You know, when God gets a hold of you, you get a little taller, amen? I said, the Bible says the devils believe and tremble, but they'll burn forever in hell just believing. What do you believe? He said, I said, I believe. I said, the Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And he says, I do believe that. And I went, Whew, thank you, God, amen. <laughs> I thought, he's going to kill me right here in the parking lot. He said, I do, and, and I got to share, and I was sharing with a guy in my church, and I've, I've told you about Danny. Danny's a, a unique individual. And Danny was the guy, he had a glass eye and no kneecaps and drove the volunteer fire department pumper truck with no kneecaps. You didn't want to get in front of him, amen. Danny was stocky. He worked as a, a brick labor all of his life, and so he'd sling those... Uh, skews a brick, you know, the, the thing that holds about 10 brick at a time. He'd grab them, he'd grab that thing and grab them and chunk bricks all the time. And Danny was just stocky as he could be. He had a quick temper. Danny said, Preacher, you tell stories about telling folks about Jesus and them cussing you out in your face and one guy threatening to kill you. He said he broke a bottle and was going to cut your throat and everything. He said, it, it just wouldn't be for me to be in that situation like that because as soon as somebody does that, I'm going to hit them. I'm just going to, I'm going to lay into them. I, I'm not going to be able to do what you said. What, what, and I told him, I said, Danny, God won't put you in a situation that you can't handle. God, if you fear Him and walk with Him, He will not allow you to be put somewhere that you and Him can't handle it. If you read Hebrews 11 about those that were accepted deliverance and you read on the bottom about those that actually some were died and sawed in half and things that you read in, in, in Hebrews 11 and it said that others, it said, wouldn't accept deliverance but they went on. You know what? God knew that if they couldn't handle it, He was there to deliver them out of that situation. But if they could handle it, He would go with them through the valley of the shadow of death. You know what? we got a God that can handle things on this side of the grave and the other side of the grave. He's in control. You say, what if ISIS comes over in the United States and starts taking lives? If God knows you can't handle it, yours is okay? But I hope your faith is enough that God says they could handle it. <laughs> you say, that could happen? Oh, it could happen. The Bible says the day will come in the end days, Matthew 24, that says that they will kill you and think they do God a service. I believe we're living in those days. But you know what? We don't have to fear. <laughs> you say, I don't have to fear. Nope. The Bible said, fear him who is not able to destroy body, but fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. There is one to stand before and fear and tremble at his presence. <laughs> but it's not man. You can look at man and say, you can't do a thing to me without the permission of an almighty God. On Wednesday night we're studying about Paul going through the middle of a hurricane. And he's, God told him, you're going to go before Caesar. And they went into a storm with prisoners and they people that has fasted and said, we're going to not eat till we kill him. And he's still going. And then he said, they went a little bit further and they go through a hurricane and they're getting ready to, the prisoners are getting ready to go to shore. And the guy says, we need to kill all the prisoners lest they escape. Paul's still right in there, gets to the shore. A snake, a viper, the Bible said, latches on to him. That's a big snake. And they said, he must be a man, he must be a murderer. My goodness, he escaped the storm, he's going to die. But guess what? He lived. You say, why? Because he was going to stand in the presence of the man that God said he was going to and testify him in the place that God said he was going to do it. There can nothing happen to you until God says it's okay. You say, well, if I believe that, there is only one I should fear, not man. Exactly. Just walk in the fear of the Lord. Saying, God, I'll stand before a God that knows it all and you're the only one. That should make me tremble. Man should not make me tremble. 
Only a holy God should make me tremble. It brings peace and protection. The fear of the Lord pleases the Father. Now you say, wait just a minute. What? Psalms 147 verse 11. The Bible says, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear Him, and in those that hope in His mercy. <laughs> say what? God it takes pleasure in those that fear Him? Yeah. Because it acknowledges that man is humble himself and he realizes there's a God that's bigger than him. Do you know the lie in the garden? The devil told man. He said, if you eat the fruit of the, the, this tree, you shall be as what? Gods. Do you know what the opposite of being as gods is? Humbling ourselves and acknowledging God. And God says when man uh, lifts himself up, he's brought down. But when man brings himself down, he's brought up. He that humbleth himself shall be exalted, but he that exalteth himself shall be abased. What it's saying is, God, I don't have to fear man, but Lord, I, know, I kneel in your presence, God. I live like you want me to live and please you, dear God. You are more important than what anybody else says about me. You're more important than what the, my, my boss says. You're more important than anybody, God. Your word. Lord, I humble myself before you and you alone. And I want you to know when you humble yourself before him, God says, I take pleasure in that. It's not that you're scared of him. It's that you've acknowledged that He is where He is, and you are where you are. It's saying, God, you're great, and I'm small. God, you can do anything, but Lord, I can do nothing. Scripture says, for without me, you can do nothing. C.S. Lewis wrote the books, the Chronicles of Narnia. If you go back and you read, they all got biblical lessons to them. If you know your Bible... When you're reading them, you realize the biblical stories have been incorporated into his writings. He uses a lot of creatures, mythical things to do it. But Aslan is definitely the line of the tribe of Judah, the Lord Jesus Christ. C.S. Lewis, the author, he said, has two girls. He said, uh, had the author had them, Susan and Lucy, are getting ready to meet Aslan, who represented Christ. There's two talking animals, Mr. and Miss Beaver. They prepare for the children for their encounter. Ooh, said Susan, I thought he was a man. They're getting ready to meet a lion. <laughs> Is he quite safe? I feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. <laughs> that you will, dearie, <laughs> said Miss Beaver. And make no mistake, if there's anyone who can appear before Aslan without their knees knocking, they're either braver than most or else just silly. Aslan was a picture of the line of the tribe of Judah. I want you to know, when you know you are called into his presence, you ought to be your knees knocking together. You say, well, he's my Lord. He's my Savior. He's my friend. He's my protector. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He's everything to me. I have nothing. I can come boldly before his throne of grace and find help in time of trouble. I know Him. I love Him. He is my Savior. That's great, but when you're calling His presence, I can guarantee you there's going to be things going through you. There's going to be thoughts going, oh my goodness, here. Can you imagine the, how a holy God that's never thought evil, that's never, I mean, the Bible says, who cannot be tempted, neither tempteth He any man. A God who cannot lie. A righteous God. A holy God. That is righteousness. He's so pure and so holy that a man was in his presence and saw just his hinder part hid in a rock and his face showed, shone so bright that he had to put a veil over him because people couldn't even look at a reflection. I mean a God that holy. And one day, one day, your name will be called and nobody will go with you. <laughs> and you will stand before that throne with angels going around saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Revelation says they got different faces and wings on every side and they're circling the throne and elders on their feet. 
on their knees and on their face before Him and you will be called before the judgment seat of Christ. And I want you to know, if that don't scare you to death, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> you say, well, I don't, I'm not scared of nothing. You'll be scared that day. <laughs> People run around and they think, oh, I like to be scared. <laughs> but you don't like nothing really to be wrong. You just want an illusion of danger. That's the reason we go to amusement parks. We ride the tower, tower of Terror. They make it look like something and they drop you on that couch so many stories up in the air and you go, woo yeah! But if you knew it was going to hit the ground, you'd be a fool to be going, woo Madagascar, they crash in the plane. They say, it's better with your hands up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if you knew you're like an illusion that it's going to be hurtful. But I want you to know when you stand before God, there's no illusion. He has power. <laughs> there's no illusion there. <laughs> he spoke this world into existence. He holds the oceans, the Bible said, in the palm of his hand <laughs> he calls all the stars by name <laughs> we can't even get the grasp of who they are and how many they are and he knows their name he said they sing together <laughs> that same God loved you enough to wrap himself in flesh and be put in a manger to die for your sins and one day you'll stand as accountable on what you did with his son and I want you to know that scares me to death. You say, that makes me want to live better. It does. It means walking in the fear of the Lord. You say, preacher, you're trying to scare all these young people into living right. I'm trying to scare these old folks into living right. You say, well, I just don't think God wants that. Well, why do you write so much about the fear of the Lord? It's in the Word. I didn't come up with it. Just because modern day preachers don't want to talk about it, it's in the book. Just because the healthy, wealthy, and wise preachers of today don't talk about anything about it. There's a God that we will stand before one day. And as we do, I want to be looking forward to His presence. I want to be giddy. I mean, I want it to be like, like something you're looking forward to. I mean, like your name is getting called for something you've been looking forward to. I want it to be like Christmas Eve, a Christmas morning, when you wake up before your parents do. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you? And your insides is going, yes, 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 yes. You say, why does Christians, some Christians, just live life like, whoo, man, I can't wait for Jesus to come. Because they're living on Christmas morning. They're just waiting <laughs> for the Father to get up. And say, it's time. It's time. It pleases the Father. I'll close. It produces confidence. The fear of the Lord, Proverbs 14, 26 says, is strong confidence, and His children still have a place of refuge. Then Peter and the other apostles, Acts 5, 29, and the other apostles said, we ought to obey God rather than men. It brings us mercy from the Father. Scripture says in Psalms 103.11, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. Fear of the Lord brings mercy? Yes. Psalms 103.13, Like as the Father pitieth His children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear Him. <laughs> you say, well, how do you put that in everyday English? Lord, I've made a mess but I want to please you. If you live your life that way, God says that He shows you mercy, shows you pity. You say, I don't want pity. I do. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. As long as it's from God, I'll take it. <laughs> I don't want to be judged according to my iniquities. Every time you say a bad, you say a bad word or think a bad thought, you want a God that's up there going, Pfft. I don't. I like him looking at me saying, he's trying to walk in the fear of the Lord. He makes mistakes, 
But when he does, he's trying to humble himself and say, God, I've messed up. He said, I'll show him mercy. I'll show him pity. But when you stick your fist up in the face of God and you say, I'll live like I want to live, one of two things. You're either lost or you're saved and out of the will of God. But I want you to know, if you are out of the will of God, there's hope for you. There's, there's a place for you. William Gurnall said, We fear men so much because we fear God so little. You know what? Man can't do a thing to you. They can't affect your eternity. This life is going out either way. You may live 50 years, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. So, ah, that's my as you're going now. Still a vapor. I guarantee you, you got things that hurt more now than they did last year. You got things that work less now than you did five years ago. You got grindings in place that you didn't know they were supposed to be sounds coming from. Amen. You got thoughts that you cannot, you cannot get together and don't know where they went to. And you know what? It ain't going to get any better. You say, thanks for the encouragement, preacher. <laughs> if you're living in a life that's only temporary, why in the world would you walk around in fear of anything or anyone except the one who is in control that you will stand in front of for all eternity? Your life should be lived in saying, God, I want to love what you love, and I want to hate what you hate, for one day I'll be with you. At our house, our girls, if you ask one of them, have they done something, if they hadn't done it, the other one hadn't done it, they come running out to tell you, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. And you tell them, I didn't ask who didn't do it, I asked who did it. I hope when we stand for God and He's calling out lives and the way people are living, I hope He'll look around and say, Tommy, hush. I know you didn't do that. Hush. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I hope He'll look around and He'll look at us and He'll say, Hey, you know, it was you. You didn't do this. And I'm pleased with you. Lord, I, I tried to love what you love. I tried to want what you want. I messed up so many times, but I didn't do that. we got a God that's in control. Let's stand. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I feel like I've been faithful to deliver your message today on the positive side of fear. And God, I pray, Lord, God, as your children are here today, if there's there's people, God, that are walking in a way, God, that we're walking in a way and that shows that, God, we don't, we don't realize that a God that we will stand before, I pray that, God, that we would get ourselves in a place, an humble place to say, God, I know I mess up. And, Lord, I want to love what you love and I want to hate what you hate, but, God, I get in my own way. Lord, have mercy on me and have pity on me, O oh God. But today I choose to walk in the fear of the Lord.